it's a great pleasure for me to be uh, revisiting uh, this uh, past. It was like uh, 16 years ago, 17 years ago when I shot those uh, images. That's me, George Akeno. It's written on the screen. <laughs> and in a way, we're going to see very soon on screen this, uh, the, what we built. We definitely built the same as uh, there is on that uh, model that we uh, made with uh, Dante Ferretti. We managed to make an Italian, German, French co-production and we decided that we were going to shoot a lot of it in uh, Italy. And I had to find a place to put that set. And I remember one day walking in the, uh, near Rome, in the countryside, it was a cold November morning, and I saw a hill, and that hill was so perfect for what I wanted, but I had no idea if I could get permission. But somewhere in my mind, I said to myself, if I'm getting permission, this is going to change the whole area. And as a matter of fact, we got permission to build this huge set so that is a reproduction of the, the real cliff uh, and it was like 10 kilometers out of Rome uh, where the whole crew was uh, living in Rome and here um, I, uh, this is precisely what I was de describing this is Moissac this is the portal this is the original that inspired Umberto Eco and here on this page uh, we see a lot of details of architecture and sculptures that we are, uh, we've been using later on in the movie, uh, especially in a scene where one of the characters sees the portal and all the moving statues, uh, um, all the demons, you know, in the Middle Ages. This is probably why I was so fascinated when I was a, when I was a kid. There was this, those weird animals uh, sculptured on, on the rock, uh, all that bestiary that was coming from Asia and was uh, quite mysterious and impressive for a, a young man. It's still impressive. I, I just, I still adore it. And here there are uh, other examples of locations where, where, in my view, fit to build a set. And a lot of it is inspired from uh, German romantic painters. They carried the sort of Gothic spirit, the, the danger, the weirdness of, uh, of the Alps in winter and going through the snow towards an unknown monastery. Uh, so this is why I gathered those uh, images. Ah, now, this is uh, one of the pictures I took when I was scouting in the catacombs because I have a scene where Sean Connery and Christian Slater go through the underground tunnels where the monks used to keep the bones of dead monks. Now, I, I first visited the, uh, should I say, official catacombs of Rome, but they belong to the Vatican. And they uh, refused to see me shooting in any of their properties. Therefore, I didn't shoot in uh, the official catacombs. Very fortunately, we used to have lunch in a small restaurant which had its private catacomb. Because, uh, you know, in Italy, in Rome especially, there are so many remains of the past that catacombs are, are not that rare. Therefore, we shot and were very happy in those beautiful catacombs just below an excellent restaurant where there was a lovely little wine uh, for the crew. <laughs> and now here we have one of the few um, scenes that I shot in a real monastery. Uh, that part has been shot in a very, very beautiful, authentic uh, 11th century monastery called Eberbach near the Rhine Valley. Now, the, the most interesting in this were the, uh, the books themselves. It, each book took uh, specialists, which are still monks doing that, um, between six months and a year to do a few pages of those books. Now, uh, the manuscripts of the period are made on parchment with paint, which is uh, uh, made of stones that they crush or gold. The, the people who know how to do this today are monks in an abbey called Pralia near Venice. Those documents, they were so beautiful that, of course, most of them were stolen. During the night, we had police in this monastery and you know German police with dogs is something quite impressive yet 
one morning I show, I show up, I had left the close-up of, of the main manuscript for the next morning. I show up with Sean Connery, the page is gone. It was the most beautiful page, all made, handmade with gold leaves and all this. And I just could not believe that it had been stolen. We had to wait almost a year to have this page redone. And I remember shooting it like two weeks before the movie was released. Anyway, uh, so that was Eberbach. And uh, uh, so you see Sean Connery here and Christian, young, young Christian Schlater. Christian was just turning 16 on my set, I remember. And it was his debut, you know. Uh, he was starstruck with, uh, with Sean, you know, when he, he said it to me the first day. He said, you know, I, I'm, I'm afraid, I'm so panicked because I didn't tell you before, but Sean Connery is my hero. In the film, Sean is the master and Christian is the pupil. And they did the same on the set. Sean was teaching him how to be an actor. Uh, couldn't be a better training, you know. Uh, and, and Christian was a, a very gifted uh, pupil. Here, Sean is in his uh, robe that we had uh, woven in uh, Morocco because I wanted a real Franciscan uh, robe that should be uh, not dyed at all. It should be the color of real wool and it was smelling and stinking wool. If you don't go through those details, th th your audience would not know why it doesn't look right, but they will feel it. Here, this is the labyrinth. This is inside the tower. Now, a little anecdote. Umberto Eco had described this labyrinth, and it appeared to me like having about like 100 rooms, but he never talked of steps. Therefore, one day I was in Milan at his apartment, we were having dinner, and I said to him, I said, Umberto, tell me one thing, how many rooms in the tower? Well, he said, about a hundred. Mm. I said, this is what I gathered. And it's all on the same level. He said, yes, oh, oh, he said, oh my God, you're right. And I said, what you have is a pizza. It's an immense pizza, but it's not a tower. On the same movement, he runs in his library and he comes back with two books one by Escher called the staircases and another by Piranesi the prisons together with Umberto we created the film adaptation of his description which is this maze of staircases and rooms are you still there yes how do we get up with some difficulty Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, Christian and Valentina Vargas. Ah, my God, that was something. Valentina was an extraordinary sexy girl. When Christian saw her, he was with his mother, he was 15, and he had, uh, I said, you should have a test with three uh, actresses and we'll see what is the best match, because I had chosen him and I wanted to match the girl. We did a test with Valentina. Two hours later, his mother comes to my room and says, I have something very embarrassing to ask, and Christian is very sorry, but here is the following. She says, Christian is so madly in love with her that he thinks he just cannot even test with the others. I didn't want Christian to know exactly what was going to happen to him. Of course, it was described in the script, you know, but I had briefed her and told her exactly what I wanted her to do to him in order to have his surprise. And she told me after that that he came days after day saying, what's it going to be? What are you going to do? And she said, no, 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 I'm sorry, this is my scene. You have the whole movie, it's your scenes, but that's my scene. And I'm going to, Jean Jacques asked not to tell what's going to happen, so uh, you'll see. <laughs> now here is my friend Ron Perlman, you know, he's my mascot. He has so much charm, he's, he's, he's got strong faces this way you know he says he says to me each time he says you know i owe you my career you made me the official monster in hollywood <laughs> but, <laughs> but he's such a, you know is such a beautiful heart and such a talented actor ah i love him fedor shaliapin that is you know wonderful wonderful face of jorge de burgos another very good actor here michael harbeck amusing in this movie 
I didn't use prosthetics. And if you look at all those faces, as I said, you know, they are strong faces. They are all good actors from Italy, a lot of them being from cabaret or local theatres or little TV shows. You know, that's the beauty in Europe, is you, you, you have many, many of those theatres and of those shows and a great pool of fascinating faces. What you see here is Tonino del Licoli, a famous uh, lighting cameraman, uh, DOP, who did all the last uh, Fellini movies and the Pasolini's, great guy, always grumpy, called Brontolo uh, in Italy. And he speaks during the scenes because he has been trained in the old days of, you know, in Italy, the way they shoot, they used to shoot, was without sound. So Brontolo was always speaking during the scene, and Sean Connery couldn't stand it, you know, he'd say, because you would hear that voice, he would talk to his electrician and saying, make this a little bit uh, straighter, put a filter here. And it was a slow voice, and Sean was really upset, and, and one day, after five, six days of shooting, I went to, 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 to see Tonino, I said, Tonino, listen, it's incredible, but we're not doing a silent movie, it's a talking movie. And he said, ma, que la diferencia, eh, Fellini got two Oscars, and I was talking during the, sh the, <laughs> the shots. <laughs> and he, he was still not convinced that it was uh, the right thing to do to keep silent during the shots. Now, what you see here is interesting. You know, here is uh, Bernd Eisching, an excellent uh, producer from uh, Germany, who became a big friend of mine, who's a very, very famous producer in Germany. And, you know, what's phenomenal with this guy is he put everything he had in this gamble of this movie. And Bert Einschinger went to such an extent that when I came back after the shoot, I went back to Munich, where I had my office, get in the elevator, push the button number two, arrives there, and it's like in a bad dream, you know, I, I, I don't recognize anything. No face I recognize, no furniture I recognize. So I'm saying, I say, that's the right building, so I go outside, Look, it's the right building, it's the right address, and my office is second floor. So I push again, second floor, and again, I'm in the wrong place. So I go first floor, I know no one. I go upstairs, I know no one. And I ask, I'm, I'm saying, is it Neue Konstantin film? Oh, they say, no, they're in the basement. Now I go in the basement, and there is Bern, Bernie is uh, like this, <laughs> JJ, <laughs> Uh, I said, what's happening? He said, I didn't want to bother you when we shot, but uh, I had to sell the building to make the movie. You know, this is how movies are made. Uh, movies that follow the pattern, movies that are made with a star of the day, movies that make the easy way to please the executive, they never make it, really. They make it maybe the first week, you know, but they're forgotten. But you know, sh sh shooting this movie uh, to this day was one of the most exciting and pleasant experience. A lot of people around me were convinced that the movie was uh, not going to work uh, because I went so extreme with the faces and, uh, and the subject matter was quite obscure. And I must say, when it, when, when it opened, you know, I just had decided that, okay, uh, Movies were not for me uh, uh, because the reviews were appalling and, uh, uh, and the public didn't go <laughs> so in America. Uh, very fortunately, uh, uh, after that, it was such a triumph in, uh, in so many countries that uh, people have even difficulty to, to believe today that I got such bad reviews. Um, but you know, this is the, the risk. And I, I, but I remember vividly, it's such a, a thrill to shoot in total freedom uh, the movie that you have in your head. And it's fine if the, if the public doesn't like it. And I still believe the same for each movie I'm doing. But I do remember looking at those images, you know, I can feel every moment where I was behind I the camera, that scene, that. for instance. I want her to be happy. I want to save her from her poverty. Why, oh dear? You are 
in love. Is that bad? For a monk, it does present certain problems. But doesn't St. Thomas Aquinas praise love above all other virtues? Yes. The love of God, Adzo. The love of God. I was so touched by the emotion that came from the reading by Sean and by Christian, I couldn't say cut. My, my throat was so tight and my heart was so full that I had to move in front of the camera and do this. Cut. <laughs> <laughs>